0304 making a way Jefferson Village Indiana USC good evening friends and the Lord which will bless you and thank you for the Neville for that kind remark so happy to be back at the tabernacle tonight in the service of our blessed Lord and to see our friends out tonight to worship him with us it certainly is a grand privilege to meet once more this side the coming of the Lord and after we see here so many going away unexpectedly so quickly we just wonder time after time who is next but having the blessed assurance that if there is nothing that separates us from the love of god that in christ there is neither death nor nothing present or future any power that can separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus and knowing this that after this earthly tabernacle is dissolved we have one already waiting and fixed and settled and we rest upon that blessed hope so glorious i was talking to my wife and mrs wood and them just i come back i was saying well it just seems like it's just trip after trip and place after place but yet they become more glorious and i knowing that we're coming to the close the nearness of the coming of the lord i said well talking to my boy coming down the road down the other day coming from out of cx falls south dakota then I said, you know, home is a great, wonderful place. We were heading back home. I said, we love this world. This is our home. We might not think it is, but it is. We were born for this home. This God put us here. We had no way bringing ourselves here. Even our father and mother had no way that had to be in the hands of God. Many people are married, but never have a child. But God so that we would come to this earth and then when we come we begin to grow and build into a body by atoms and lights and so forth as it begin to take on from the earth and then after we got a certain age they stopped growing we still add them to us but they going away death has set in and then when this ashtabara could be dissolved we have one they are waiting we enter into that we'll know one another we can't shake hands we have no senses of feeling we can't i couldn't shake your hand say how do you do brother because i you wouldn't have that type of hand but yet we are not in a corporal body as we are now we are in a celestial body and then when this and i was thinking that down in egypt that when joseph left a memorial to the, the children of israel his bones that they that someday they were going out and as they went out they would take his bones with him up to the promised land and every hebrew that desired to be back in the homeland so no matter how well he was treated yet his longing was to go back to the homeland and every time they passed by and saw these bones they knew that someday they were going back to the homeland while we are here waiting crossing out of this place we see an empty tomb over in Jerusalem, letting us knowing that something happened. And then when we take on that glorified, not glorified, but special body, and we are walking around in the glory land with Christ, looking at each other, speaking to each other, we can talk, souls under the altar, crying, how long? And then what will be the memorial there that we are coming back to us again to eat and drink and sleep? There'll be sitting there on a throne in a corporal body, amen. Someday he'll rise in that corporal body, and when he returns back, these celestial bodies will take on glorification. Then we'll be like him, and we'll live forever in that body. What does anything else matter? See, it's already settled. That's just anchor right there, and let this, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, when all around my soul gives away. He then, he's then all my hope and stay. Christ was the one who made it possible. Not my church, not my denomination, not my friends, but Christ. All other grounds in Satan Son, all other ground. No wonder I declared that they thought he was mad. The other day, setting in there as a slave to the people, Holy Spirit preached and picked up the pen and began to write that marvelous song that would be sung at the Bapaliot service on the inauguration of the King of Kings, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Wonderful report from up 
in the north now. We had a ministerial, not a ministerial, but a fishing businessman's breakfast up at Minneapolis, and uh, the biggest breakfast we ever had of businessmen. 2,000 came out, and the Lord gave us a message. And that morning in the altar call, 50 businessmen came to Christ and was born again that morning in the service. Oh, that just thrilled my heart. A businessman coming in, marvelous services everywhere. The Lord be praised and all glory to him. And now I got a little note here. It said, when will I be in Indianapolis? On June the 11th through the 15th, we'll be at Cattle Tabernacle in Indianapolis, Indiana. June the 11th through the 15th, seating 11,000 people day after tomorrow. And we leave for Shreveport, Louisiana, and to be there through the weekend at Shreveport, Louisiana, and then we leave Shreveport and go to Houston, Texas, and we'll be there two days, which will be Monday and Tuesday. And then on the 16th, we begin in Old Mexico, Mexico City. Old Mexico, Mr. Aganbridge just called me, and they secured the big bull arena there that has a seating capacity of 60,000, and there's 400 churches cooperating, already signed up, we're expecting 100,000 at the meeting. And it's the first time this was coming to praise God for. The first time in the history of Mexico that the government has ever welcomed a Protestant in, give us a place to come. The first time in the history of Mexico a Protestant has ever been welcome, and that was General Val Diva, the general of the Mexican army, has just been born again and received the Holy Ghost. And by his courtesy to the governor of Mexico, gives us the government right to go in with the militia protection. And that we are, I've got the big bull arena. That's the biggest thing that is in all Mexico. It takes 60,000 around like this, besides the room where they do the fighting at, you know, in there. And we got it for 10 straight nights now, without any interruption, right? Uh, straight across through the 10 straight nights, be praying for me. I just feel, hear the sound of abundance of rain down there. I just, the government, the Mexican people are very simple, humble believers. And once convinced, they're Catholic. And uh, once convinced that a truth is a truth, then that settles it for all. When hurrying right back from old Mexico, get back here about the 30th, and the first, that's the Easter morning at the tabernacle here, for a sunrise service and a healing service to follow it, and a baptismal service that night at the tabernacle, and you can tell your friends now to bring, you know, the sick and afflicted for the Easter service, the sunrise service early that morning, and then following that, up at 10 o'clock, 9.30, regular service, Sunday school time, we all plan on it, the Sunday school, and a healing service to follow, that regular service like we have in the campaigns. And then to the Mexico City is to be the first time that this new vision that the Lord has told me is going to be in operation at that time. So, we'll try it again, the Lord willing, right here, Easter Sunday morning, using these two rooms here. See, so we're expecting a great time here, Easter morning. And the proof that the Lord Jesus has risen from the dead, he's alive yesterday, and he's been alive since that first Easter. And he's here with us now, and I just trust that the Lord will give us a great outpouring of his blessings for that morning. Then we go to, from the, here then, we go to Chicago for the 11th. There, starts to the 11th, and we leave on a Monday, begin on a Tuesday and begin through the number it's third through the eighth and then on the eleventh we begin in Charlotte no Columbia North Carolina and then to Springville North Carolina and then from there to Charlotte South Carolina and then Anchorage Alaska from there up into Anchorage Alaska then back and not determined but perhaps maybe be by then the tent will be ready to be on the road. Oh I'll just uh you know what I want to do? Will you pray for, with me for this? For the for the men. Look, I want for too long the Lord willing to put that tent right here in this fall city and staying there for four or six weeks meeting. Just stay right there until the battle is finished. And you'll be praying for that now. And I'd like to stick it out here between Jeffersonville and New Albany 
somewhere and just put up about a seven or eight thousand city capacity in it and then you can add more as the days go by and just stay right here until it's settled amen and then i think then on the 11th the 15th of june at the saddle tabernacle in Indianapolis, and then the 17th i believe through the 21st of june is at Indianapolis in the football stadium out there sitting 27,000. that's the international convention of the christian business men speaking and having prayer for the sick each night and now be praying over this do and pray hard I just feel that we haven't got much time now and I predict it I don't say this is the Lord saying this now I'm predicting that this year America will receive Christ or judge Christ see I believe this will be the turning point that America will go in will have a revival in this day or we won't have a revival and I believe that this is the year that America will make its decision and I trust that will make it and will have a great revival that will just sweep we're having much preaching and much evangelism but we need a revival don't we a real revival that's what we need the lord bless you glad to see you brother granham there and i believe brother smith setting right in front of him and brother smith from the church of god and there are several ministers in here i'm sure and we welcome you all brethren each and every one in the strangers in our gates all the lady we just love you and now with these announcements away and realizing that tonight communion night for the communion service and pray hard for our dear brother never who is holding the fort here at the tabernacle doing a great job for the saints everywhere oh what an easy time what an easy time i hear it from down in africa and such a call for africa and brother angambright was just telling me on the phone a while ago that the king of some of these countries down in there i just forget where it was i believe it was up in syria and switzerland i'll get it in a minute denmark has wrote a special letter to make this decision to come there at this time in africa and in india many different places where hawaiian islands got in the other day that's about 10 times straight that they've called for revival christian businessmen wants to go out there and just fly over it make an order organize a chapter and speak for them that morning and then begin a revival in hawaii so the whole world has become a parish see to the whole world and we are his servants so let us just remember friends that this may be the last night this may be the last year or maybe the last generation see we don't know but anyhow we do know this of a fact that the living know they have to die is once appointed unto man to death and after that the judgment and if there be any here tonight who isn't ready to meet that and has not this blessed hope may this be the night that you will decide for the lord jesus for once for all for eternity now shall we pray our heavenly father we thank we want to thank thee from the very depths of our hearts knowing that we are waiting here not frustrated at all no matter how many atomic bombs they make how many fighters service people they put out on the watch the planes the world nervous and shaky we are resting upon this blessed hope that we have we are trusting in the finished work of god and calvary through christ knowing this that after this after tabernacle is no more we got one already waiting yonder more glorious far more there is no pain or suffering sickness no old age we'll never strike it never a gray hair never a wrinkle but we'll be young there forever the blessed bible which cannot tell nothing but the truth has given us this blessed assurance and the holy ghost also is a witness and bearing record of the sin our hearts long for that and we know that the bible tells us so which is the word of god the seed to be planted upon this fertile ground let us rest in this hope god i pray that you will touch every person tonight outside of christ and bring them to this house marvelous work heal the sick setting here tonight lord no doubt in this many people there is bound to be sickness in the midst of us and we pray that you heal everyone now come to the word father take the word which is the lifeline the grassroots lord of all civilization we pray that the holy spirit will take each word and give it to the heart just as in have need may 
We fellowship around the world for your aspect in Jesus' name. Amen. For a little reading of the scriptures tonight, for a little text, to try to hunt a context and be safely right to the word so we, uh, we can have the communion. Tomorrow, being Monday, I know we don't like to think of those things of having to go back to work, but we have to face that. And many times, you know, that after all, this is the most essential than jobs and everything else, see? For a job will play out someday, and you will uh, play out with it. But if you've got eternal life, you will never have an end. It's eternal. It lives on perpetual. Think of it as a perpetual life has no end. When aeons of time has passed by, on by, you'll still be there. When the millions of years roll by, you'll still be there. So just for a few days, here on earth, Job doesn't amount to so much just to help us along, buy a little food and so forth, rest, which we want to have it. Now in First Corinthians, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse, Therefore, let us, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he falls. There hath no temptation taken you, but such which common to man, but God is faithful, who is not willing that you not to suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able but with every temptation also make a way of escape that we may be able to hear it what a beautiful verse may the lord add his blessings to that making a way would be what i'd like to speak on tonight no may he add his blessing to his word as we listen now to the word it's my opinion that if the word, which is a grassroots, which is a thing that takes hold, many times in my healing services, I try to, uh, even after the teachers have went out through it all, I try to come back and take the word and lay a foundation a few nights ago. I got a lot of criticism, which is fine. A man told me, he said, Brother Burnham, you are just a boy yet. He said, I was preaching the gospel before you were born. And he said, all my 46 years, but yet, he was a teacher of some Bible school, he said, but a man that of your kind that teaches people and yet will make a remark that you have made the other night, said, it's ridiculous. He said, you see, the devil didn't have the power to heal. He said, perhaps, what if I tell you that the devil has got power to heal? He said, now you would ask me, if you are standing present, why? I know, he said, I'll tell you. He said, in our town, there was a woman lives there which um, has a bad spirit and she so people comes to her for healing says she'll pull out hair off uh, their head she'll pump up blood from their veins wrap it up in this hair walk down to the river and cast this thing over her shoulder and not look back if she looks back said then the diseases remains with the person but she has to throw it in the river like it was forgetfulness and walk away and said, 50% of the people who keep count are healed. He said, now, if the devil can't heal, what about that? So I answered him back. I said, my kind, beloved brother, with all due regards to your ears, see, all due regards to your ears of teaching, but I'll tell you now that Jesus Christ said, that the devil has no power to heal. And if Jesus said it, that settles it with me. He said, if Satan casts out Satan, then his kingdom is divided. And it has an end, and he cannot cast out Satan. Then you would ask me, why was these people healed? Why it's not the person, the witch had nothing to do with it, no more than I'd have to do with it, or any man. It's the people that's approaching, thinking that the summon God's provided way for their healing, it's their individual faith in God that does the healing, see? That's the approach that they think it isn't the witch or no more than it would be the man yeah so therefore the gospel can only maneuver or it can only reach out as the word of god is taught and the men base their hopes upon god's eternal word faith comes by hearing hearing by the word dr adair here in the city my beloved friend said to me one day he said billy don't you think if uh, people had faith to touch the tree out there, they'd get the same results. 
I said, how could you have faith in that if you could have the evil amount of faith believe, believing that if God's provided reason for you to not touch the tree, it would do it. Then they could do it. But who has got faith in the tree? I got faith in what God said, and I just take that. So faith isn't built upon truth in terms of emotional conceptions, but faith is built upon the standard of God's eternal word, the rock of ages. There is where faith takes its hold in, rest in place, and never moves when it's built right there. Now, making a way, I don't believe that God ever ran his office that had, has had a way. I wouldn't run mine. You wouldn't run yours. Jesus didn't. That Calvary is just to say, well, now maybe people will feel sorry for me, being that I come, go to the earth, and take on the form of flesh, and they'll really get saved. Maybe, if they see how pitiful I die. God didn't do that. Jesus died for one purpose, and that was to save those who God for you would be saved. That's right, God knew there was going to be somebody saved, and there had to be a preparation or a way made for them to be saved. If there wasn't salvation wasn't possible, so God knowing that people would be saved, knowing who they were, he had to lay a plan down. Now, you say to me, Brother Bertram, that God knows exactly who will be saved correctly. Well, why does it say he's not willing that any should perish? He isn't. He isn't willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance, but order to be God, he has to know who will do that. Or he wasn't God because he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, he knows everything, he's at every place and all powerful, so knowledge looks back and says that he foresaw this and knowed that's the reason he could tell what the end was from the beginning. And therefore, knowing that all these marvelous days that we're living in now, and to stand and witness and see the things that we see now, God had to make a preparation for it. The other night, I was so amazed, I saw a woman come up to the platform, uh, that $300,000 place there, she had a little makeup stuff on her face, she stood there and she started trembling. I said, you are Lutheran, by the Holy Spirit. She said, yes, sir. I said, you are here to be prayed for. And the reason you're walking the way you are, both knees has been broke. I see that was caused by a car accident and the car that you were driving in four years ago. She said, that's true. I said, your doctor is a little short fellow, bald-headed and wears glasses. She said, that's right. And I said, he is doctoring because of in the knees, the bone has become tubercular and even the flesh is rotting around the bone. She said, that's right. She said, is there a hope for me? I said, that depends on your approach the Lord Jesus. I said, she said, can you help me? I said, no, ma'am. No one can help you now, but you have to help yourself to God's provided blessings for you. She said, I now believe with all my heart. I said, the Lord healed your sister. That, that says the Lord, you're healed. She said, Mr. Branham, I haven't been able to kneel, she said, for four years, while weeping, standing there, rubbing her hands, and a great audience of people weeping, watching her, Lutherans, Presbyterians, and I said, why don't you go down to the altar and kneel down? She said, let me kneel right here, where, uh, right where I'm healed. She had never moved from her steps, but she knew she was healed. Something took place, see? She knew it. There wasn't any guessing about it. I said, kneel down. And for the first time in four years, with both knees broke and all calloused over, made over the bones together, that woman, like a young woman, knelt on her knees with the tears streaming from her cheeks, raised up her hands to God. Well, just raised right up from there, just as easy as a little girl and tipped off the platform. What was it? God had to make a way for that. Now, he sent doctors, that's right, and doctors are fine, and they had done all they could do but god had made a way that's it see after the doctor had failed in this his way god's way is so much higher than our way what a wonderful thing now to think tonight that you and i won't don't want to think this that we were actually natured after the world see like pigs and tonight have become saints 
something had to be done. Now, we couldn't go into heaven as seeds. We'd have to go into heaven as saints. So, the preparation had been made for this. And God gave it so beautifully in the Old Testament back in the book of Numbers, about the 20th chapter, and over in Exodus, about the 36th, 32nd, and we find out on the Day of Atonement, God in the type foreshadowing what he would do is the antitype when he come, which was Christ. The high priest was commanded to take two goats, little goats, and take them in for atonement and an offering and a bullock for his own family. And many of you readers here and studiers of the Bible know just how the atonement was. But then one goat there had to be a lot cast. And the Lord fell on one goat, he died. And then the blood of this goat was placed upon the other goat, with the hands of the high priest confessing the sins of the people upon the living goat. And then a man who was worthy taking the living goat under his arms and went way in the wilderness where the goat would go to perish and go to into an isolated out of the holy place. Never no more in that state to come back into the family of his own again. To be isolated forever and bearing the sins of the people away. Now, I know many scholars, perhaps us sitting here, and especially the Adventists, they say that one goat was Christ and the other was the devil. Now, brethren, I have to differ a little on that. We can't sacrifice the devil. Both goats represent Christ. Both of them was Christ. He, is our, he bled for our sins and he bore them uh, himself away. Devil can't be under sins. Christ is our sin bearer. Get it straight. Then your faith won't move. Christ is our sin bearer. And the sins of the world. Christ was on dying animal to cross. Listen, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And only the types we were drawing dividends, knowing that the antitype would come someday. Why he was slain from the foundation of the world? Because God perceived in his mind how then things would be and what the church would be. And what everything would be, and he spoke the word, and when God speaks the word, it's as good as done. Right then, so he was slain from the foundation of the world. You see it? When you get down to that now, and let your faith rest solemnly, not upon man, not upon theologies of man, not upon church dominations, as good as they are, as good as man is, let your faith rest alone in Christ's finished work at Calvary for both sin and salvation. You see it? Notice Christ came and he was a dying animal, for he was already in prefigure slain before the foundation of the world. You see it, God spoke it and said it would be so. So when God speaks, it's forever confirmed in heaven. The word there, that's where we ought to have faith. If you believe this to be God's eternal, intangible word, then every precept that's been Spoken God's word is a seed, and everything of God has spoke of in the word is already confirmed in glory, and it's been given to you to act upon. So don't be afraid to take any phase of God's eternal blessed word and anchor it in your heart. Now, it has to be in soil. Now, for instance, I took a grain of corn and put it in a blue pumice stone or something like that. It perhaps will not grow because it's a wrong kind of soil. But if it goes into good fertile to black topsoil, it will grow as sure as it's placed in there. And when the word, here it is now, when the word of God falls into a heart full of faith, it just has to grow. It's got to take hold. That's the reason the woman standing there with the both knees calcium over like that from the deposits and the breaking of the knees where both was washed and the bones rotten with tobacco and also the flesh. She wasn't afraid to bow her knees for that. The word had fell in faith. Springs up. Do you get it? God, before the foundation of the world, said that Christ would be here. And he would slay, die the innocent for the guilty. And when God spoke it, it was already confirmed when God spoke it. Now, before it can be word, it has to be brought thought for a word as is a thought expressed. And then if the God in his mind perceived these things, then they were in his mind. Then he spoke them, and they are as good as finished when God speaks, because he is infallible and can do nothing else. Then God's attitude, if God saved sinners back there, 
on the basis of accepting the burnt offering, the sacrifice provided he is brought to do the same thing today, or he did it wrong when he took the first man in by it. If God healed the sick back there, upon the basis of the shed blood of an animal, upon the basis of the atonement, he has brought to do the same thing today. Or he was going wrong when he healed the first person. See, he can't change now. We grow, we mature, we find better things, we talk of better things, we wear better clothes, we drive a better automobile, we are progressing. But God cannot progress in that way because he was perfect to begin with. And perfection cannot progress anymore. It's really perfection. Amen. So you don't have to say, well, this is a different age. We've got a different uh, thought now. If it is, he can't be God. So, if he is God, what he spoke back there, he has to stay with it because he was perfect there. And it's perfect now, see? You see it? Then, he can't progress. He can't, well, I mean, he can't, and better things, make this a little, see? This would be a little better. You see? What about the old lamp and this lamp? That was a type waiting for it, and here it was. He spoke of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world in the beginning. I put enmity against her seed and serpent seed. And then to wait for the fullness of time came. God gave a propitiation of sin through the shed blood. The lamb pointing. He gave the same thing through the moon at night of there being the sun in the daytime. The moon being a shadow of the sun or the sun shining on the moon making a shadow. The moon and the sun is husband and wife. And while the sun is gone away, it throws its light against the moon to give us a smaller light until the sun comes. And when the sun comes out, the moon fades out. And Christ is the sun who has gone to glory and shining on the church with the same kinds of light he shined when he was here. And the church is the light of the world until Jesus comes and it all melts together like the moonlight and the sunlight becomes one light when it merges together and when Christ comes and his church comes together at the great millennium they emerge into one and today ye are the light of the world in his presence in his absence rather he is giving you the light to shine with while he is here all the old things all the things of the earth are types of the heavenly. Even to spiders and lizards and snakes and so forth are the only types of evil spirits reflecting back. Why was a cancer called cancer? Because it has a form of a crab. And the word cancer means crab. Now, you see all those things that are types and shadows. So the scapegoat that was put away into the wilderness in an isolated place, separated from his fellow citizens, bearing the sins of the people upon his head, was a type of Christ, being separated from God and out of his presence, and bore our sins to hell. And there God wouldn't suffer him. David said, I'll not suffer my Holy One to see corruption, neither will I leave his soul in hell. And on the third day rose again for our justification. But he typed the goat and the scapegoat and also the goat for the sin offering. God making preparations in a way provided way, God always makes a way of escape. Every time sickness pins you into the corner, God, Satan pins you down to a place after you become a Christian. Maybe you've been a gambler. You see it. The cards are on the table. Come on, John. We know it's in you. Satan is there to tempt you. But God, in every time, will make a way of escape if you just accept it. Maybe you have been a drunkard and the glass is under your nose now. Come on, John. Now, if you want to be heed to that voice, you'll go right straight out to your wall again. But God is always there. Turn your mind towards heaven and look toward Calvary and say, Blessed Holy Spirit, come to me. I'm in need. Watch what takes place. God will make a way of escape every time, for he will. God has always did it. And now notice, before the destruction of the world, when men were sinful, and the people who are sinful in the world, God made a way of escape for those who desire to escape. By it, God had an ark built, prepared. Noah built a way for an ark for the preparation. This ark for preparation of a way, listen, from a way that 
of escape, the wrath and the judgment of God was piling up in the heavens to be poured upon a sinful nation and a sinful people who, who rejected it and stiffness to walk against the commandments of God all the time his, this wrath was being piled up in the heavens to be poured out upon the people in judgment. The merciful God made a way of escape for those who desired to walk in it, the way of escape. Now we have come to the place again where the judgments are piling up, and if that day in the antediluvian, how much more today when the end of the history of the time, when the ending of history of the nations, end was coming to a climax. How much more is the wrath of God upon millions of more people heaping together until sin has stepped into the world, until the shattering of the drunk man staggering home at four o'clock, then gone beyond the moon and stars until it reached the garments of Jehovah of Sabbath. Then she is struggling under the load of her own man made theory, of her own self preservation, of her own theologies. We have taken the commandments of God and making them run in set by teaching the traditions of men, loving the praises of men more than the praises of God, our teachers, has become lukewarm and placing upon a joining church and saying, that's your right as long as you belong to church. Just forget about it. But brother, God made a way of escape. And you'll have to come God's terms and thus through Christ Jesus our Lord. No other foundation is laid but that which has already been laid. No, no one to build upon any foundation is like stubble and mud. The floods will wash it away, and the great will be the fall. Jesus said, Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is it he built it upon? On the scripture revealed truth that he is the Son of God. Who does man say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say Elias, some say Moses, some say John the Baptist, and so forth. But who do you say I am? Without hesitation, without taking a second listen, sinner, that's the way to receive it. He had been with him, he knew what he was, and then before he could even think a second time, the Holy Spirit got a hold of him and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Blessed thou, blessed art thou, Simon. But Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, for you never learn this from somebody's theology, you never come from a seminary with it, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed it to you upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The floods may come, and the termites may fail, and all, but he who is safely in Christ will ride the storm of the termites, the same as Noah did the storm of the flood, safely in the ark. Let your fist drop down into that. Once see what takes place on God's holy rock. On the types, God makes a way of escape every time. He has to make a way of escape. When the strategic time comes, God is the God, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. For the Lord will provide for himself a way of escape. God can provide it because he is a creator. And God, once and for all at Calvary, Amen, there... When the archangels of heaven, when all the regions of demons trembled, when the earth took an abbot's prostration and shook the grave, and when the sun had convulsion and hung back yonder and turned into blackness, when the moon and the stars shook out their places, the redeemed of all ages, and through the age will come, will recognize that hour when the Son of God died there, through Satan of every power, even death. And hell and the grave and all fear was swallowed up at Calvary when he prayed the supreme price and when the lamb died and the sins placed upon him he was a sin bearer took them to hell where they belonged and God raised him up on the third day and by believing that we are justified by faith on the basis of of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God making a way of escape. Oh brother, as you see, hear the ambulance screaming. Every time you hear one, it's a marker that you're going that way. Every time you pass a graveyard, it's a marker you're going that way. Every time a wrinkle appears in the face and a gray hair in the head, it's a marker you're going 
that way. No wonder then Paul could say with that real hope rooted in grounded in him like this, my when he got down to the end of the road, he said, I fought a good fight, I finished the course, I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. The Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day, not only me, but all that love is appearing. When you're sick and tired of this old life, and you love the appearing of the Lord Jesus better than you love your food at the table, or your wife, or our children, then there a crown laid up for you, not a crown, a gold crown to put upon your head, but a body free from pain, the crown in the glory of God, crowned in the immortality of Jesus Christ, that was laid up for you, that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give you at that day, that the day we look forward to. God has made a way of escape for every one of us. Certainly he has. When Daniel the prophet, God's child, was thrown into a lion's den, there was a time that Daniel, being faithful, who raised his windows and wasn't afraid of what the king said, and when they prayed, regardless of what the proclamation was made, Daniel prayed anyhow, as he faced Jerusalem and prayed. If men faced Jerusalem and prayed, the city where the burnt sacrifice was made, that's the reason Daniel looked the way that way and prayed, for the Lord had already said the people be in trouble at any time and look towards this place, this holy place, and pray there and hear from heaven. When Solomon dedicated the temple, that's the reason Jonah had the faith he did. When he had seaweed wrapped around his neck, and standing in vomit in the belly of a whale, way down in the deep of the ocean on a stormy sea, he said, There are lying vanities, but once more will I look to the holy temple. God, God did something, he made a way of escape for Jonah. What he did, nobody knows, that's God's own secret. But no matter where it was impossible, God can alter circumstances, he can make the impossible become probable, and not only probable, but can make it a reality when men take God at his word and accept the provided way that God provided for the man. God did something. He might have put an oxen tent down there and don't know what he did in the belly of a whale, but he kept Jonah in there for three days and three nights as a type that Christ would lay without oxygen in the belly of the earth and on the third day he'll come out again. It was a type. He made a way of escape. He always will. When Daniel stood there and the lions coming running to him, there was not a fear in that old king's heart. But he stood there and God wasn't finished with him. But just before the lions grabbed him, an angel spread before them, no doubt but a same burning light that appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. A big light shined out and they looked and they didn't know what was taking place. And straight Saul fell from his horse and a voice came, from the light saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who is it, Lord? He said, I, Jesus, we are persecuting. It was the Hebrew children who had been faithful to the promise of God that was laying down there in the fiery furnace, or in Babylon, rather, going to the fiery furnace, one step between them and death. How much that may be to men here tonight, there may be one day between you and eternal separation, you'll make a decision now. The way is provided for you if you'll accept it. One step, said Jonathan to David, when they shot the bow, one step between me and death, and one step between them and death. But just at that crucial moment, God provided a way of escape, and he sent into that fiery furnace the Lord Jesus Christ and kept the fire off of them. It was Enoch who claimed that he walked with God for 500 years and had a testimony he pleased God. He had a faith that he wouldn't see death. How could God do it? There wasn't even a jet plane in those days to get him off his feet. But God provided a way, a translation that took Enoch from earth to glory without receiving death. It was Elijah who stepped across the ocean or the Jordan River that day by dividing it from one side to the other. And when Elijah was ready to go to heaven without dying, it was God's provided way for him, not a jet plane, but he sent a chariot of fire, drove by horses of fire, God provided the way in the minute a way of escape from death. It was Moses, I believe who followed the children of Israel, or who 
led them following the light, the pillar of fire through the wilderness. It was Moses who endured to the end. It was God. It was Moses 120 years after eight years of service for God who stood upon the mountain, looked over into the promised land with the tears rolling down his cheeks of an old man, 120 years old. He had come through the briar patches. He had waded the deep waters. He had tasted the bitter cup, cup of gall and sorrow. He had been with the disobedient people as their pastor. He led them from place to place and put up with their murmurings and throwed himself in the brick and said, God, take me before you do them. It was Moses who stood there as an old man, knowing that in every way he was a type of Christ, knowing somehow, some way, God would surely take him because he had to bring him up again as a type of Christ. He was a prophet as Christ and not only a prophet but leader and so forth. He was hid away in the bulrushes and so was Christ taken into Egypt. He was a lawgiver as Christ was to, to the Mount of Olives who lived from Sinai. Every way he was a type of Christ and when he was old and death staring him in the face, how could he ever bring forth resurrection. But just as a crucial moment came, God provided a way. When the breath was leaving and gurgling in his neck, he looked laying by his side and death to be on a rock. God provided a rock. The rock was Jesus Christ Jesus who was in the wilderness. Moses endured to the rock. God give me grace to endure to the same thing. That's when life's breath is being brought from this body. Let me see the rock standing there stuck over on the rock and the angels come and pack him away. 800 years later, he was standing in Palestine with Elijah standing there talking to Jesus before the cross. God made a way of escape. Two of the greatest things in the Old Testament that I can see in the prophecies, two great factions was it. The people looked forward to a time when the Messiah would come and then after the Messiah come, they looked forward to a time when the Holy Spirit would come. Finally, in due time, all the types back there that they made through the prophets and everything, all the types and the atonements they had. Finally, Messiah came and it was felt out because God had said so. Then they looked forward to a time to a great glory of church that would be without spot or wrinkle, that would shine in the earth as a star. They looked forward for that time. How is it going to be? He had been dead for three days and nights. He rose again. He appeared unto five hundred and he ascended into heaven. He left them on earth here alone. How could it be this? <laughs> this glorious church, when the leader was gone, God promised the church. How could it be the light that would shine in its place after him been gone? When he stayed there a little while and the world sees me no more, yet you will see me for I be with you. Even in your turn of the world, the things that I do shall you also show. Be to all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them that believe. How can they do it with Christ absent from them? How can they do it when God gives them the promise? But look, God never provided a Pentecost. When the Holy Ghost in person came down and took over mortal man's body after they had been cleaned by the atonement of the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Ghost took that person into his own control and sent him forth with signs and wonders and miracles, a following God provided a way they couldn't do it in themselves. They were men like you and I. How could they do it? They couldn't, but God provided a way of escape. When they were in the upper room, they thought the people would make fun of them. They thought they would do this or that or the other. They had the windows all closed and the doors locked. How could they do it? They were covered. They had no backbone. They had a children, a chicken wishbone and not a real Holy Ghost backbone. They had the doors locked. They was afraid. They was ashamed to walk out and face the public. How could they do it? But God sent a Pentecost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They flung the windows and doors open, and in the streets they went. God promises, with God, when God promises, God will keep His word. 
He'll make a way of escape. He'll never suffer you to be tempted above anything that he won't make a way of escape for you. He'll do it. Here we are. We've lived through the day of the dismal day. Cloudy, rainy. The church is halfway in and halfway out. You wonder how they can do this and how they can do. They had no light. But the prophet said, it will be light in the evening time. How can it be? With the church in this day, that glorious church that should be here on earth, when Jesus comes, we see the glorious church that is seething, glittering, the poor out, a double portion of the Holy Ghost is coming upon the earth and is sweeping. Every nation and revival fires are burning on every hill in China, in Japan, from Korea, the dark Africa, and everywhere. The Holy Spirit is being poured out upon the people. God made a way. How did my blind eyes be healed? God made a way. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. He'll always make a way. And for you here, that's in the earth today, you who are waiting for the consolation, you who are pilgrims and strangers, be like David. David was going to be battle. He didn't go placated. He didn't go with a one a halfway mark. He didn't go thinking maybe it will do it. But he waited in the mulberry bush until after a while it was death, silent, nothing going. After a while, way back in the distance, he heard the leaves start to get louder and louder and louder. After a while, a great gush of wind went on before him. He knew that was God and the holy host of angels going before him. And he drew his sword and took the battle and set the enemy to flight. Brother, don't jump up and think something when you're not right to go yet. Stand and see that it's not joining the church, not shaking hands with the preacher, neither is it being baptized in water, but it's accepting God's ready sacrifice, Jesus Christ as a person in your heart. The Holy Ghost will move on you before like a rushing wind, moving everything from the way. Amen. That's it. Then the Christians, you who are in the way, the real God-fearing men, there is coming up a revival pretty here pretty soon. A big tent meeting. I can just see it, right? What do you want to do? Conduct yourself. Here some time ago, down in the Southlands, there was people used to go buy and buy slaves and so forth. I just happened to think of this little story as they went by would buy slaves and would notice the poor fellows has been beat. They hated to leave the country and they knew they never be back. The Negro people, it was pitiful how they were treated. One day, they happened to notice one young fellow with his shoulders thrown back. They didn't have to beat him. No, sir. Some buyer come by said, let me buy that slave. He said he's not for sale. He said, well, what makes him so much different? If he... The boss over the rest of them said, no. He said, what makes him so different? Do you let him eat better? He said, no. He eats the rest of them. He said, what makes him so much different? He said, I happen to learn that his father is the king of the tribe. Though he's in a far land, he still throws his shoulders back. He's a royal-born man. His dad is a king. Though he's an alien, his father is a king. My father is rich with houses and land. He holds the wealth of the world in his hand. Of rubies and diamonds and silver and gold, his coffers are full. He has riches untold. We, the people here of this tabernacle, have the infallible proof of the resurrected Lord Jesus with a revival that has swept the land from a humble place like this, no more than the manger of Bethlehem, and probably more humbler, but through here, God has sent forth a great revival, has swept out tens of thousands, yes, into the millions, into the kingdom of God. Do you want to be a fellow citizen with us? Are you ready tonight, Sida? To throw down your indifferences, throw down your sinful life, and straighten up your shoulders and join this ranks of army, of a marching people, believing that the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Shall we pray as we bow our heads? Our kind Heavenly Father, tonight as we wait upon thee, expecting the grace of the Spirit of God to move out through this audience and to do the exceedingly abundantly, as we are just now with thee on the eve of taking the communion. Oh, Father God, we pray that you'll speak to sinners' hearts tonight. Let them come, Lord, basically, not upon emotion, not upon some sad story, but upon the truly unadulterated word of God, that God 
so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. God grant tonight that the words of the Lord Jesus in St. John 5.24 will ring in every heart. He, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath eternal life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life. May many pass this hour from death to life as we wait for the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. Amen. And with your heads bowed, I wonder as a sister prays, is anyone Christian in prayer? Is there a man, woman, boy or girl that would raise your hand to God? But not me. Say, write this, I raise my hand to say to you, God, I believe that the judgment is ready to strike the earth. I am under the condemnation of this judgment. I must be separated from God, from the presence of the church, from the presence of the Christian people. I must be tormented forever in an eternal hell. But tonight I feel your spirit speaking to me that I must be chosen of God. For Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father draws him. And I feel a peculiar way in my heart that, that I now want to accept Christ as my personal Savior. And God, I raise my hand to you and say to this, I now accept your Son Jesus Christ, the provided sacrifice for my ill and ill filmed sins. And I raise my hands to you. Will you do it? Men or woman, boy or girl, in here at this moment, will you raise up your hand and say, By this, I now accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Waiting a moment for you to make a decision. Just raise your hand. God bless you, little boy. Someone else raise your hand. Say, God bless you, my brother. All right. You are making it to God, not me. As many as believed or baptized and was added to the church, 3,000 souls were saved. There is a fountain full of blood. Certainly. Will you plunge now by faith, saying, Lord God, I now cut loose. Oh, I've bent up to the altar many times. I've done this, that, and I've joined the church. I've tried to escape the wrath. But tonight I'm coming this away upon the basis of Jesus Christ dying in my stead. He was a sacrificial lamb. He was a scapegoat. He was all, and in him I am complete. He bore my sins. He took my place at Calvary. He took my place under God's wrath. He took my place under God's punishment. He took my place in hell. And for me to take his place in heaven, to become a son of God, I now accept the, the basis right now. As a sinner, I believe, when sin is plunged into the flood, lose all the guilty sins, lose all the been prayer church while somebody is making a decision for the Lord, pray, lose how much? All the guilty sins, Jew, gentle, wonderful, free sinner, or church member, priest, doctor, lawyer, Whatever you may be, and lose all your guilty sin by believing on the Lord Jesus, accept Him as personal Savior. Listen to this verse as we sing poetry now. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain. At the end of the road, all hopes gone, there appeared a fountain. Are you at the end tonight of your own will? Sin has plunged beneath, lose all the guilty sin. Lose all the guilty sin, my Heavenly Father. It's all in your hands. An elderly man and young boy raise their hands. That they wanted to receive you while the fountain has been opened through the word we appreciate your fellowship lord the holy spirit maybe they are all christians all faith they don't waste their hearts lord they may have crossed over even the line between mercy and judgment never again desiring to raise their hand or never again desiring to have any feeling that you would call them i pray father if that be the case be merciful god i pray that you'll save this man Lord, I pray that right now, down in his heart, the joy bells of heaven is ringing, and that little boy the same way, knowing this, that Jesus has made his statement. He that heareth my words, believeth on him that sent me, has an everlasting life, and shall never come into condemnation, but has passed from death to life. That's your word, Father, and we believe it. Give them everlasting joy now, that they have accepted everlasting life. We pray that you make their Life full of joy and fruitful and happy. Grant it, Lord. Bless others as we wait on thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.